Hi guys, it's Twigs, and for today's video, I'm going to be continuing the story of David. Before we begin, I just want to say that a lot happened during this part of David's life, so I will be skipping to the more interesting bits for time's sake. However, it's a great story and I highly recommend that you give it a read. Okay, on with the show. Upon returning to Israel, all of the women came out to greet their king. Saul has slain his thousands, David is ten thousands. Okay, so I've slain more than thousands, while David is credited with conquering ten thousands? What's he going to take next? The kingdom? Saul became very jealous of David, so when the evil spirit came over him, he attempted to kill David, throwing a javelin at him twice. When this fails, Saul goes through an array of sneaky plans to get rid of David, putting him in charge of a thousand men, asking him to kill 100 Philistines in order to marry his daughter, telling his son Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David, and he even tries to throw a javelin at him again. Nothing works. So Saul sends messengers to surround David's house and kill him. But David's wife Michael warns him of her father's plans and helps him escape through the window. When the messengers come for David, she makes his sleeping dummy in David's bed, telling them that he was sick. Saul was furious. The king soon finds out that David had run to Ramah, so he sends men after him three times, eventually going after David himself. But each time they went, the Spirit of the Lord came over them. While this was going on, David seeks advice and his best friend, Jonathan. What did I do? Why is your dad trying to kill me? What? No way. My father doesn't do anything without letting me know. Why won't he tell me about this? He knows that you love me like a brother. He probably just didn't want to upset you. Perhaps. But we gotta know for sure. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends devise a plan to test Saul and find out his true intentions. Saul fails and Jonathan sends a coded message that lets David know that it was no longer safe for him there, so he runs. First he goes to Elimelech the priest, who provides him with holy bread and Goliath's sword. David then runs to Gath, but some Philistines recognize him, so he escapes by pretending to have gone insane. He then hides in a cave where he ends up becoming the leader over 400 men. After asking God for advice, David goes and saves Keilah, which had been under the attack of the Philistines. Saul is told that David was in Keilah, and so he plans to go after him, but David hides in the wilderness. At one point, Saul finally has David surrounded on a mountain. But just then, the king receives word that the Philistines had invaded Israel. While Saul is dealing with that, David finds a cave to hide out in. Eventually, Saul takes 3,000 men and continues his hunt for David. The king and his men find a cave to stop and rest in, oblivious to the fact that this was the very cave that David and his men had been hiding in. Once Saul is distracted, David has the perfect opportunity to kill him. But he doesn't. When Saul sees that David had spared him after everything that he had done, he apologizes to David before they go their separate ways. Around this time is when Samuel dies. David has an interesting encounter with a very rich man named Nabal and his beautiful wife Abigail. Basically, David has ten of his men politely ask Nabal if he could spare any food after explaining that they had been providing his shepherds with protection. Nabal responds rudely, insulting David and greedily refusing to share. David was so angry that he planned an attack against Nabal. But when Abigail hears about this, she gathers a bunch of food on some donkeys, takes it to David, without telling Nabal, and apologizes for her husband's stupidity, which David happily accepts. Ten days later, God smites Nabal, and David marries Abigail. So, you know how it seems like Saul was over his whole kill David thing? Well, apparently, he wasn't because he once again gathers 3,000 men and heads after David. Saul stops to camp on a hill where David spots him from the wilderness. David and Abishai go into their camp at night, where they find Saul fast asleep. Once again, David has a chance to kill Saul, but spares him instead. I'm so sorry, David. Come home to Israel. I swear I'll never try to kill you again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did not trust that. So he decides to hide amongst the Philistines. David lives in Gath for over a year, stealing and lying in order to gain favor with King Achish, who makes David his personal bodyguard. The Philistines were preparing for war against Israel, and Saul was terrified. He attempted to ask God for advice, but he wouldn't talk to Saul. The king doesn't know what to do, so he puts on a disguise, finds a witch, and asks her to summon Samuel. What do you see? Hmm, yes, I see an old man wearing a cloak. Who dare summons? Oh, of course, it's just you. What do you want? The Philistines are rising against me. God is ignoring me, and I don't know what to do. 
Oh yeah, about that. You make God your enemy. Israel's going to lose the battle. Your kingdom will be given to David. And you and all your sons are going to die tomorrow. You must be starving. Gotta get some meat on them bones. The next day, David and his men get revenge on the Amalekites for stealing their families and burning their homes. Meanwhile, Saul finds himself heavily wounded and running from the Philistines, who had already taken down all of his sons. Put me out of my misery before these pagan Philistines get to me. What? No way. Saul takes his sword and falls upon it, and the armor bearer who was with him does the same. I know this is a very tragic ending, but this is what ends up paving the way for David to become the king over Israel, just as God had intended. And this is the part of the show where we thank our wonderful voice actors. With Pierce as David, Chris Frankie as Saul, Nathan as Jonathan, my dad as Samuel, my little sister as the Witch of Endor, and my little brother as the Armor Bearer. I would also like to thank the girls from church for doing the singing bit from the beginning of the video. Everyone did a fantastic job. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was quite a long story to animate, but I had a lot of fun with it. This is actually the second video in a three-part series on David, so go check out the first one if you haven't already, and keep an eye out for the next one. If you listen through this entire ink card, then cool. Here, have a cookie. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.